This week, Russell Crowe is a victorious Roman general turned gladiator. Kim Basinger rebuilds her life in Kenya in I Dreamed of Africa. And abandoned wife Heather Graham heads west to stand by her man whether he wants her to or not in Committed. Oscar nominee Russell Crowe shares the Roman Coliseum with Savage Beasts in that scene from Gladiator. It's one of five new movies we'll review this week, and I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Joyce Kilhaywick, film critic for WBZ-TV in Boston. Our first movie is Gladiator, and this one is a real disappointment, a movie that's been photographed in such a dark, dingy, and drab visual style that the energy just drains out of every shot. At the beginning of the film, you want to see some excitement. At the end, you want to see some daylight. As the movie opens, Russell Crowe plays the victorious General Maximus, who's chosen by Emperor Marcus Aurelius, played by Richard Harris, to end corruption in Rome. It's quite an honor, but the Emperor's son, Commodus, played by Joaquin Phoenix, gnashes his teeth with jealousy. I pause. We pass to Maximus. To hold in trust until the Senate is ready to rule once more. Rome is to be a republic again. Maximus. Maximus is left for dead by a vengeful Commodus and is later made a slave and transported to Africa where he comes under the power of Proximo, a manager of gladiators. It was played by the late Oliver Reed who died during the filming of this picture. Win the crowd and you'll win your freedom. I will win the crowd. I will give them something they've never seen before. Gladiating is Maximus's ticket back to Rome, where the Colosseum is run like a Roman version of professional wrestling. Caesar, he's proud to give you Alias Maximus. Maximus becomes the all-vanquishing hero, and that leads to a showdown with the insecure Commodus. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Even though Gladiator was directed by Ridley Scott, who's famous for his special effects, the film has a murky look, and the Colosseum, partially created by computer animation, looks especially unconvincing. The actors do what they can, but the dialogue undermines them, and sometimes the parallels with the World Wrestling Federation seem almost deliberate. That's when a tribune announces, Caesar is happy to present the only undefeated champion in Roman history, the legendary Titus. Give me a break. One other thing, Gladiator thinks that when the Romans wanted somebody to live, they signaled with thumbs up. Actually, live was signaled by a thumb inside the fist. An extended thumb in any direction meant death. But nobody in this movie knows this, and that's good for Maximus. You know, who cares? I don't think it matters. It's hard <laughs> to even know where to begin here. I yeah. thought this was one of the best movies I've really? ever seen. I thought this was one of the best movies of the year. Ever seen? And you make this film of the sound year? of the year easily. You make it sound frivolous. There's nothing frivolous about this, this movie. This doesn't have any depth. This it doesn't have any juice. This film is eloquent. The story grabs you from oh, the beginning. On. It has, it is visualized in a way that Ridley Scott is known for, where he reinvented the, the future in Blade Runner. He gives us an authentic, fresh take on the past you know, here. My... It is not murky, and wherever it is murky, it serves the battle sequences. It is very, Russell very Crow, a, an actor of tremendous charismatic, towering power. He has a kind of intensity and eloquence that we haven't seen, I think, since Richard Burton, and he also reminds me of Anthony Hopkins. And the characters here, Joaquin Phoenix, Commodus, the complexity of this character, the man is a monster. He's the, the monster is, he knows that his, now, his father is going to it's become. It's my turn. It's my turn. But Commodus he, we is absolutely transparent compared we to somebody like Nero in Quo Vadis, played by Peter Ustinov. My heart broke for him. This film succeeds 
in every way, on every level. And I have to say, I'm shocked at what you have to say about it. Absolutely him. doesn't. Did you see Titus? Yes, I Titus saw Titus. Titus shames what? this movie. Let no. me talk. Titus shames this movie. It shames it. It shames it in the look, in the drama, in the characterizations, in the performances, in the depth. This movie is very basically just a gladiator Stanford, movie. Titus and her work, as a matter of fact. It's a very unique vision, but it certainly wasn't as dramatically compelling as this. And the characters didn't have this kind of complexity. And the language here, you cannot make fun of the language. It was extraordinarily compelling. I actually but in the first Shakespeare's language. five minutes, I was writing things down because oh, it was so... Oh, you got to make fun. This is no Technicolor toga party held on some Hollywood back lot. This is a fine uh, We have a major disappointment and We have a major disagreement. Oh, Okay. Here. We certainly do.